All right, so 1.2 definitions part three, types of measurement scales. Now, when I think about types of measurement scales, there's four types we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna talk about nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal, just like its name says, nom, you know, it's just names. All right, what I mean by this is, it's the lowest level of measurement. You can't really say one is bigger than another, one is smaller than another, one is better than another. So an example of nominal would just be colors. All right? We can't really compare one color to another, it's just a color. Is red better than blue? Eh, no, not really. Now, ordinal is similar to nominal, but it's one has one more property to it. And for ordinal, there's an order on it. Now, everybody knows this one. You can think about a star rating on Netflix. All right, so when you have different star ratings, we know that a one star is better than a five star. Now, similarly, we can talk about small versus large clothing, and we can compare them to one another and put it on a scale. We couldn't necessarily put color on a scale Although, to be fair, a lot of times we do with red being bad and blue being calm. Like if you look at a weather report or you look at the uh, you know, terror alert warning system they have. But nominal just has names, no comparison. Ordinal has an order on it, and that's something like a star rating. Now, the next two get confused a lot. Now, in interval measurement not only has an order, but it scales up and it scales down. What do I mean by this? A four-star rating in Netflix does not mean that the movie is twice as good as a two-star rating. Right? It's just a way to separate the categories. Same way a five-star is not five times better than a one-star. With an interval and with a ratio, you're allowed to double it or triple it, and then it really means it's three times the size or two times the size. Right? The problem with interval is that there's no meaningful zero. Right? The best example of this, especially for our areas, when you, where I live, where there's snow, what does zero degrees mean? All right? It doesn't really mean anything. Because you can have negative degrees or positive degrees. There's no true zero. Now, I know if you're a sciencey person, you might talk about absolute zero. I'm going to ignore that for now. But when you have interval measurements, zero doesn't really exist because you can go below whatever your zero is set to. Think about the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit. You have 32 versus zero degrees. Both mean water freeze, and you can go above that or below that. It doesn't mean a thing. Now, ratio has a meaningful zero. Now, what do I mean by meaningful zero? Well, look at a ruler. When you look at a ruler, we can go from a foot down to six feet, down to three inches, down to an inch and a half. Da, 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 da. And then eventually you'll get to something that has zero inches. All right? When you're at zero inches, that means there's no length. You could talk about weight this way. All right? When you're talking about an amount of water in a pail and it's evaporating, eventually you will have no water in the pail. You can never go below that. You can never have negative water in the pail. So again, nominal is only named. You can't compare one to the other. You can only assign it this group or that group. Ordinal has an order on it. Think of star ratings. Interval, now you have meaning between a 2 and a 4 and an 8. I'm doubling it each time and it literally means twice as many. But you don't have a zero because you can have negative values. The zero is just arbitrarily set somewhere for ease of use. Think zero degrees Celsius versus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And lastly, you have ratio, where the zero is meaningful. 
think about measurements that you take that you can't go below zero height. All right, something has a height or it doesn't exist. Okay. 